If you're tired of giving away most of your profits back to the markets when you're in winning trades, you're in the right place. In this session, you're going to get four strategies plus a heap of tips along the way to enable you to bank profit more easily rather than giving too much back. So whatever or whenever you trade, prepare to have your trading stops solved. In this session, trading stops solved, four approaches to optimize profit retention. It's Mike Smith, the Trader IQ to just give you in this relatively short video some practical advice and some examples of things to look at when you're considering trailing stops. Let's start with what the problem is. Are you leaving yourself wide open to profit risk? That's the problem we're trying to solve with trail stops. Profit risk is the habit of giving too much back to the market after trades go in your desired direction, something that we never want to do. We want to keep as much of that profit in our own account as possible. And a trail stop of your original stop loss is a potential solution to this. But really, in terms of practical hands-on guidance, real deal examples of what works and what doesn't, there's very little out there which compares alternatives and gives you a number of different strategies. However, let's start by looking at the challenges. The first challenge could be that you don't use a trail stop at all. You have a stop loss in take profit potentially, and that's it. So what you see is something like this on the Canadian dollar yen. You'll sort of enter on a breakout trade somewhere around here. You'll see it go all the way up and come all the way back down again with maybe getting pretty close to your entry. So you've given away everything that you gained and potentially heading towards your stop at this stage. Obviously undesirable, obviously something that we want to resolve. Second thing is you could have a trail stop written in your trading plan, but you just choose not to follow it. And of course, there's a few reasons why people don't follow it. And the most common is FOMO or fear of missing out in that you'll take a trail stop off in the fear that it's going to bounce and continue to move up. Or you just need to do a heap of work on your discipline to make sure that you do lock in profits when they're there. The third challenge is, and this I'm guessing is the case for most of you, is you don't measure it or even test it against anything else to make sure it's the right trail stop strategy for you. So a couple of other things I'm going to share with you as we go. So. If you're in this position where you are not using one at all, ask yourself the question, is it time to take a trail stop challenge? So what I want you to do is take the easy one, which is the first strategy we're going to discuss. Look at your last 10 trades, find the charts, put it on and compare the results of what would have happened versus what you actually got and see if that creates enough compelling evidence to say, hey, look, I really need to make a decision on doing this in my trading. There's no doubt that trail stops assist in locking in profit, but there's three things I just want to highlight right now from the get-go. The first of these is, do you place your trail stop on the platform or don't place it on the platform? The problem is, of course, that if we don't place it on the platform, uh, we could be up for this, what we call a catastrophic candle. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail later. Obviously, if you put it on the platform, it restricts you from some of the strategies we're going to talk about today. Second thing is what works for one might not work for another. And what I mean by that is we actually tested a number of different strategies on different instruments, on different time frames, and found there was gross disparities between which trail stop worked, even the parameters within a specific trail stop. And I'll give you an example of this in a moment. That was very different depending on the instrument you were looking at. And the third thing is if you don't measure it, you don't know whether it works or not or whether it's the best for you. So measuring is key if you want to refine your trading and i'm going to talk right at the end about the process you can use to make this happen for yourself so moving on to the easy one to start with which is the price ma cross and essentially what we're doing is we're using an ema as a trail stop so let's find an example uh, yes you, let's use the example of a 15 minute gold chart let's say we entered on this breakout and took advantage of this move up here what we would do is as the price pop back through that EMA, and in this case, we've chosen a 10, then we would exit the trade. Now, as I said before, one of the things that's interesting is although there is commonality between this working as a trail stop strategy, it does differ instrument to instrument as to which is the optimum EMA. In the case of gold, we found it was the 20 EMA, which was the best result, back testing every trade that fits certain criteria during this year. However, whichever one you used, it worked well. So the principle is that you adjust after each candle or use an EA to do that for you. And we've got an EA that we uh, offer our clients to enable that to happen automatically. So for example, it's the price in the 15 EMA. Obviously, if we're going long, we're looking for the price to come back down. 
if we're looking to go short, then we're looking for the price to come back up to the 15 EMA. In terms of challenges related to this, you've got to choose which type of MA to use. We tend to use the EMA because we track trends more closely. Some people prefer a simple MA, but again, that's up to yourself. In terms of what period, a good start point is the 15 EMA. That would be a great start point just for your test if you're looking at this for a first time as a potential trail stop. And the other debate is, is it a closed price cross or is it an in-time touch? If we put it on the system, then what we're essentially doing is let's assume this green line is our trail stop and it's tracking this 10 EMA. So we move this up every 15 minutes and with an anytime touch, we might get taken out at this point here. With a cross of it, then we would definitely be out on this candle here. So that's what I mean by a cross or an anytime touch. The problem is if you're using a close price beneath the 15 EMA rather than an intra period touch of the EMA, you can't usually place this on many trading platforms. And there is always a risk of a catastrophic candle, particularly after events such as economic data. So the use of a safety net stop may be worth consideration. But obviously, if you've not got a stop actually on the system itself, actually on your trading platform, then there is a high level of discipline required to exit when it does close beneath that MA. The second is to look at levels. And if it breaks this line, then it's gone. Sort of principle, there are a number of different alternatives. We can use retracement levels, hence every time it retraces and then subsequently moves up, then we move the trail stop upwards. We can use a multiple of risk or an ATR. So if the ATR is 50 points, every time it goes up 50 points, I move the stop 50 points. It's really that simple. All key levels such as support, resistance, pivots, fibs, often on smaller than the primary time frame is worth consideration. Again, you've got the debate of whether it's a close or a touch choice to consider in your trading. So let's say, for example, we're going short on the US dollar index on a 30 minute chart. We'll take this as our entry as a trend reversal, a double top type of pattern going on there. And you can see at this point it retraced and then continued its move downwards. At this stage, we might move the trail stop down to there and you can see here again there was a little retracement so we might then move the trail stop down to here and with this retracement here it just continued to go up. so our exit would be at this point here you can use pivots or a fib level if it breaks then you move it up to the one that's subsequently lower if you're going long be consistent what you shouldn't do is use retracement levels for some trades and then a multiple risk or ATR another and maybe uh, every time it breaks through a pivot level, you just move it up to the one beneath uh, on the next trade. So be consistent because what you can then do is look at the what would have happened if scenario. What I would say is that you don't use 50 points or 20 pips or a dollar as your trail stop because what you need to do in terms of testing systems is take into account different volatility, different pricing structures of every instrument. So you're far better using an ATR on multiple of ATR to do this rather than a specific dollar or points level. The other thing is just beware limit order placement. Often people place limit orders just around and about levels. If something is pulling back, put your trail stop just below a level if you're going long and of course above a level if you're going short. Number three is the MACD signal line. It's all about momentum, of course. Most of you will be trend traders and as you're trading a trend, let's say you're trading an uptrend what you're looking for is some signals to say that trend is done and of course the macd is a momentum indicator which can illustrate that and what we're looking for is the move of the signal line to outside the macd histogram to signal a potential change in momentum let's just show you an example of that i'll show you on gold on this 15 minute chart you can see there if we traded this bounce there's the macd histogram we've changed the setting slightly to mirror our moving averages up here uh, but you can see there, it's at this point that the signal line goes over the histogram. So at this point there, we would take that trade off at this level here, uh, locking in this move subsequent to this V-shaped bounce. Now, in this case, we'll be around about the same level as if we'd use the 10 EMA, just to give you an example of a chart we've used before. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. And you can see here, again, similar sort of story it was a heck of a move on Bitcoin during the night. Uh, but you can see here, if we'd taken this as a long trade, uh, the point at which we get out would be here, as that's the level at which the MACD signal line has been breached, which is better uh, in this case than the cross of the moving average. 
or even the touch of the moving average. So what we're doing here is it's usually actioned on the close price, not in the middle of a, a bar. We found that works time and time again. Close price is the one to work on simply because that's when everything is mature. Uh, so the challenges are the MACD settings. And again, because you're checking in on the back of every closed candle, uh, there is no stop there. So having some sort of safety net stop is not a bad idea. So if we go back to Bitcoin again, if we enter somewhere during this candle, it might be where we have initial safety stop there. And then we maybe have a safety net stop there, just in case there's a catastrophic candle, because if it can do that going on the way up, it can certainly do it going on the way down. But just a key point on this, in terms of the MACD settings, if you're using moving averages as part of your decision making for entry, let's say you have a 10 or 20 EMAs on your chart, it makes absolute sense and seems logical to be consistent with what you use for the MACD. So we change your default settings from 12 and 26 on the MACD to 10 and 20. Generally speaking, however, we would keep the default settings to start with. Number four is the parabolic SIR dot. And, and really, this answers the question, is this trend done for now? Uh, the parabolic SEI is, in essence, a trend dot that in an uptrend sits below the current price and vice versa for a downtrend. So if we look at this on the euro USD, so let's assume we took this trade here. You can see the parabolic SAR is beneath this. And then as soon as it switches over, suggesting that uptrend is done, then again, we can take it off on that candle there, which in this case would have been better than our 15 EMA. Only just though, and it's a good example, if I just bring this up a little bit, is a really good example of why a close through an EMA is sometimes good. You can see how the wick moved beneath that, uh, but by the end of the candle, it was above it again. And although it wasn't much, it was probably a couple of pips better off because of doing that. Couple of things you can do. There's two ways you can use the dot moving over the price in a long trade or below in the short trade with no platform placement. So again, consider a safety net stop. The other thing you can do is to use the dot as a trail, and then you've got a choice. And how you do that is so let's say we're in here at this stage, our trail would be here. So every time we've got a new dot, that would be our new trail. So we'd move it up subsequently, subsequently there and there and there and there. Uh, and that would be our ultimate exit point there when it breached that level there. So it actually worked irrespective of which approach you've taken. I prefer the dot over uh, rather than using the dot itself as a trail. But that's my personal preference and something you can try out and test for yourself to see what works for you. And these work on any time frame. Let's just check in on our Canadian dollar yen on a five minute chart is another example of where a MACD exit may have been prudent. So we see there, there's the MACD signal line closing over the top of the histogram. So it'll be out on this. That is slightly better than our exit, which would have been on the close price there through the EMA, or indeed, if we had a touch at that place there. Irrespective of what we do, there's a few messages that are really important from this session. It's a good idea to always start with the default setting when you're using an indicator. You can tweak refinement later on as you go. Secondly, of course, you've got that decision to make as whether it's a close with whatever you're using or it's an anytime touch. And of course, having that safety net stop is critical. So in terms of re refining your system, what you've got to do, go do that challenge if you've not got a trail stop system in place now. If you have, plant your flag in one of the things that we've talked about today after you've gone back and looked at some of your previous trades. And then, of course, trade it religiously and then you can test and measure generally appropriately. And then we can start to compare alternatives. So what would have happened if, and then we can refine our system accordingly on evidence-based feedback, not just on a whim. The advantage of that, of course, is you increase belief in your system and you're more likely to be disciplined in trading it. And the good news is that this isn't hard. What I've just described there isn't rocket science. The thing that's hard is, is putting in the work and the commitment to improve results and the drive to make it happen. So you have got a process, you have got to have the discipline, to actually write down and articulate a plan that works, that actually specifies exactly the trail stop you're using. It does require discipline to trade religiously and of course, to follow through and measure what you're doing. So it's all up to you. I've given you the ABC tools of the trade, so to speak, it's up to you now to put it into practice. So your actions from this video, make sure you follow through to make a difference. If you're not using a trail stop currently, or don't have consistency in what you do, take that trail stop challenge and see what would have happened to your results. Secondly, plant your flag in one approach, as I've said, 
and articulate how you're going to action it specifically and unambiguously written in your trading plan. That's written down. Not and of course, commit to follow through and take action on checking out alternatives. And using that refinement process, you can find yourself in a position where you've got a trading plan that you really believe in, that is creating reliability of results, and it's going to serve you for a lifetime of trading. As I said, it's not rocket science, but it does require some work from you. So over to you guys. Let me know what you're using now, what worked or didn't work for you in this video in the comment section below. And of course, feel free to support the channel by clicking likes and subscribing. If you want more videos like this, I'd be happy to help. In the meantime, trade safe. We'll catch you again soon. Bye bye for now.